I want to welcome to the program uh, Joanne Novak, uh, Assistant Vice President of Business Development for Hartville Pet Insurance Group, providers of ASPCA Pet Health Insurance. Joanne, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Great. Nice to have you on the program. I really appreciate your time with us this morning. It's a pleasure being here. And and before we get started, I just want to take a moment to congratulate you on the recent private exchange forum. It really was a terrific event. We made some great connections, and it was really nice to participate on your ancillary panel. I really appreciate that, Joanne, and uh, I look forward to our continuing uh, continuous involvement together. You know, my background goes way back to founding Employee Benefit News, as you might well know, and, you know, I've was back at the beginning when pet insurance first raised its head, and I think uh, today we see tremendous growth. Talk a little bit about talk a little bit about the history and what we see today, and and where you see pet insurance going. And I guess also start and give a little background there on uh, ASPCA pet health insurance. Sure. Um, thanks so much uh, for that opportunity. Uh, the company uh, that I work for is actually Hartsville Pet Insurance Group, which is a, a trademark for our underwriter, United States Fire Insurance Company. And um, we are one of the oldest and largest pet insurance providers in the U.S. So we date back to offering our program to consumers uh, to 1997. And in 2006, we were selected as the exclusive pet insurance provider for the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. So we created what is now referred to as a flagship brand for us, known as ASPCA Pet Health Insurance. And what's important about the company and the brands that we have, number one, we're an underwriter. Um, We have deep actuarial history. Our plans are offered in all 50 states and D.C. Um, We are currently insuring over 100,000 dogs and cats. We've processed well over a million claims. Um, And we're headquartered in Camden, Ohio, where we have about 150 employees. Uh, But that doesn't count the pet head count. So on any given day, we've got about 40 pets that come to work with us as well. (laughs) So, so, so pet insurance. You guys practice what you preach, right? Uh, Yeah, we sure do. We do, and we have good pet behavior as well in the office. It's really lovely, though, to come in and visit with us. Um, But pet insurance is still a relatively young consumer product in the United States. It's it's even younger as a mainstream voluntary benefit. So um, Hartsville recognized the potential for pet insurance on the voluntary side and actually created a dedicated channel to focus on voluntary benefits back in, in 2008, which is when I came on board with the company to help them build that channel. And so we took a predominantly distributed direct-to-consumer product um, and created a voluntary opportunity. And it's, it's really paid off for us because today we are in over a 1,000 organizations through various wow. partnerships. How, how, does it, how does pet insurance generally work? I mean, how does it, tell me how it works. Um, I'll try to demystify this a little bit for you. It's actually filed <laughs> <laughs> it's actually filed property and casualty insurance. So it acts a lot like human health insurance. So in terms of the basics, simply put, pet insurance helps a pet parent pay for veterinary care. Um mm-hmm. According to the American Pet Products Association, about 68% of households, that's about 82.5 million homes, have a pet. And last year, we spent over $15 billion in veterinary care, and that's about a 66% increase over spend in 2006. So our pet insurance, ASPCA pet health insurance plans, offer a range of affordable coverage options with benefits available for everything from accidents, illnesses, wellness care, hereditary conditions, alternative therapies. Let's just say we have a plan for every need and budget. And accident plans, which are similar to a catastrophic plan, can start at less than a dollar a day. And our average annual premium is about $425 a year. How does it work? Um, Plans are actually based on the premium. It's actually underwritten based on the age of the dog or cat the breed, the species, and the zip code. And so that's where it begins to sound a little bit like human insurance. Um, Also, right, so the higher the age, the higher the premium. Breeds, of course, 
for example, a giant breed may be predisposed to more health-related issues or, um, unfortunately, a shorter life. That kind of sounds like a smoker versus a non-smoker being rated on the, on the life side. Um, and, and so the benefits, um, our, our consumers can choose a deductible. They can choose between $100, $250, or $500 per year, and they can choose a copay, which can be um, 90 or 80 or 70% of usual and customary cover choices. You notice that I'm using the word consumer. It's really interchangeable with employee, and it really right. fits with what consumerism is all about. Yeah, it does. Um, are there, are, does it work like um, our typical insurance? You, have you set up a network where – you have to go to certain veterinarians for the care? How does that work? Not with our plans. Um, for okay. ASPCA Pet Health Insurance, you can actually visit any licensed veterinarian, specialist, or emergency clinic in the United States or Canada. And then you pay your veterinarian for services and submit a simple one-page claim, uh, one claim form back to us for reimbursement. Yeah. Very interesting. It has, has one of the challenges to growth just been simply education, educating both the employers and the brokers looking to put it in a plan and then educating the consumers on the value proposition, you know, for they? Um, I think you've really nailed a very key point. Education is critical. As a matter of fact, uh, we believe so strongly in education at Hartville. We have a separate veterinary channel that is dedicated to educating veterinarians as well in the value of offering pet health insurance because we know that when pet parents have pet insurance, they are more likely to say yes to recommended treatments than not having the program. Yeah. And and uh, and you just alluded to the connection with consumerism. I mean, it all makes logical sense if we're, you know, whether it's an exchange environment that we'll talk a little bit about or whether it's just the overarching healthcare consumerism, if the, if the key is providing employee consumers with choice, pet insurance seems to very be a logical choice to have in this offering. Well, we, we, we firmly believe that. And, you know, listening to Scott in the previous interview talking about um, engagement um, as another yeah. key component, and this is a year-round benefit. It is not yeah. just something that's offered at open enrollment. So it's one of the things that you can use to drive employees back to your exchange um, with educational tools and and support. Yeah, you know, we talk a lot about the fact that you know, in an exchange for the exchanges to su succeed, it's got to be a complete offering from A to Z. And you know, the first part is to you know the choices that help them choose the right major medical plan and then the right supplemental health to fill in gaps and manage the risk for their families. But then the other is lifestyle benefits to better manage their lifestyle. And, you know, whether that's, that's life insurance, whether that's other elements, that's where pet insurance just has a very logical fit. I mean, I'm a pet parent and Jonathan's sitting here as a pet parent and it, 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 make, it makes a ton of sense. Well, I'm a pet parent. I, I actually don't have human children. I say I have three kids with 12 legs, and I actually think I'm my best favorite hypochondriac. Um, but I am – so so I not only market pet insurance, I'm an active user of the pet insurance policies that I have for for my pet kids. But I, I'm going to expand this concept um, in, in connecting it to the workplace as well because from a – you talk about choice. Um, yep. And this is a benefit that employees are asking for. We hear this a lot with inbound requests from human resources. I say to them, you know, how did you hear about us? We did a survey, and employees are saying they'd like us to offer pet health insurance. So this is one of the things that's really contributed to our growth. We need to listen to what lifestyle um, benefits, even though this is filed insurance, what is it that employees would like to be able to have a choice with? It's a recruiting and retention strategy. There's no cost to the company. There are no minimum participation requirements. And, and employees can save because when they're able to offer our pet insurance in the workplace and through an exchange, we're able to extend a filed discount on our base rate premiums to employees with the benefit, of course, of payroll deduction. The real key is also linking this to health and wellness in the workplace. And if, so as pet parents, you and Jonathan know, 
that we consider pets as part of the family. In fact, our new channel tagline is pets are dependents too. So if you think about the financial and emotional stress that's caused when a pet family member is injured or ill, um, or how an unexpected medical emergency for a pet can create debt or drain savings, we want to eliminate that stress based on care for a pet with decisions based on economics by having pet insurance as a benefit that can help ease that burden. Yeah, that that just makes uh, all the sense in the world. Is it? And I think stress management uh, is a big, big issue right now. To and there's a lot of different moving parts. You're you're actually pointing to one uh, that needs to be addressed. You know, to promote you know overall wellness. You know, and and this is both financial and emotional stress that can be caused through the you know financial you know challenges that some pet parent might deal with and having to take care of that pet and then just the emotional challenge of making sure it's dealt with the right way. Absolutely. Yeah. So so talk about, um, you know, what you're doing um, at Hartville to make it uh, relatively easy for this benefit to be integrated for employers, brokers, and exchanges, because sometimes that can be a challenge. Uh, absolutely. Um, I would say that the voluntary benefit program we've created is one of our core distribution capabilities, and we, we've worked very hard to make this an easy program to offer. So we've developed all of the collateral um, and educational materials for employees to use. We actually, um, there's no physical application that needs to be collected, and that really ties very nicely with what exchanges are doing with all online enrollments. Um, we have terrific decision support tools. Remember, this is a consumer product that we've expanded to include employees, so they have the benefit of using the enrollment system that consumers use to purchase this product every day. And, and for employers and brokers, we have a variety of implementation choices for delivering the benefit. So we can work with a group that's interested in a turnkey direct bill credit card option, um, all the way through to payroll deduction and integrating with platforms that have single slot billing for payroll administration. Excellent, excellent. Uh, well, Joanne, really, we really appreciate you having us on the program today, and I, I want to give you an opportunity to leave our audience with uh, a couple takeaways and thoughts. Um, thank you so much. Um, so uh, reiterate a couple of statistics that I mentioned earlier. 68% um, of households have a pet, and we consider pets to be part of the family. So we believe that pet insurance is a relevant voluntary benefit that employees will value and HR can use as part of recruiting and retention. I also think that the time is right for exchanges to continue to expand their offerings into the whole category of ancillary benefits. That's pet insurance. Frequently, we're paired with auto and home and prepaid legal. We really should be in the mix because our benefits are offered to more and more employees today. And over time, I think if we're not integrated onto exchanges, it ultimately will create more work for our HR partners because they'll be separately managing programs. So it's also going to be more work for employees to go find these benefits if they have to go to an exchange for core products and then other places for ancillary. So we think that there's a wonderful opportunity to, to really begin in this category to integrate more on exchange platforms. And I want to thank you so much for having me on the program today. Well, we really enjoyed it, and uh, we, we sincerely appreciate you being part of the IHC, too, Joanne, and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you soon. Enjoy your weekend. You do the same. Thanks so much.